This video is an introduction to biomolecules and covers carbohydrates. So there'll be additional videos. So this is just to help you start off. So let's look at the function of food and the elements in food and biomolecules. Well, food is required to provide energy and also the raw materials that are needed for metabolism and continuity. Six common elements which make up all living organisms and are found in food are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulphur. And we say the rhyme or the letters CHO NPS like a phone number to remember them. Atoms of these six elements can combine in ratios to form biomolecules and biomolecules are chemicals that are made or found inside living organisms. And there are four biomolecules that are found in food and we have to study them in detail, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and vitamins. There are other elements that are required and these are often referred to as minerals. So minerals are elements needed by organisms and five of them occur as dissolved salts, sodium, magnesium, chlorine, potassium and calcium. And often you're asked to recall these, which are the five elements found as dissolved salts. So the best way to remember them is to make up the rhyme. So we have Sophie makes chipped potatoes carefully and we take the first two letters out of each of the words and that gives us the first two letters of each of the elements. Three elements, which are metals, iron, copper and zinc, are termed trace elements. They are found in very tiny amounts, so they're needed in very small amounts, but are essential for life. So we say cis to help us remember them. So we should really write them as copper, iron and zinc to remember cis. So we've covered our introduction to biomolecules. Now let's move specifically on to carbohydrates and write some summary notes. So we're going to start with carbohydrates and we're going to cover these only in this video. So all carbohydrates are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Carbohydrates in the diet are sugars or starches and they have a general formula and it's very important that you learn to write this formula. It's often forgotten. So the formula for the most famous carbohydrate is glucose C6H12O6. So that's the one that you'll encounter most on your course. And carbohydrates are particularly interesting because they have a definite ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, two is to one. So when we're studying carbohydrates, we start with the most simple sugar unit or the most simple building block of carbohydrates, the monosaccharides. Glucose, fructose and galactose are monosaccharides. Glucose is the most important monosaccharide broken down in respiration to release energy. So that's a catabolic process. And fructose is a monosaccharide that's found in fruit. Galactose, the main source of galactose, is from the breakdown of lactose, another sugar found in milk. And monosaccharides will react with Benedict's solution to form a brick red precipitate. And because of this, they are termed reducing sugars. And this is what the practical looks like. So there's the brick red colour positive for reducing sugar. So on to disaccharides. So disaccharides are when you get two monosaccharides to chemically join. So maltose, sucrose and lactose are examples and it's important to remember examples. Maltose is formed when two glucose molecules combine. Sucrose is formed when a glucose and a fructose combine. And lactose is formed when galactose and fructose combine. So disaccharides can be broken down into those monosaccharides. So finally, we have polysaccharides and these are made of many sugar units bonded together. So they're extremely or very large molecules and examples would be starch, glycogen and cellulose. Starch is made up of many glucose molecules combined and excess carbohydrate is stored as starch in plants. Glycogen is found in muscle and liver cells and this is where excess carbohydrate is stored in animals such as us humans. Cellulose is the main component of plant cell walls and humans cannot break it down and so it's not of direct nutritional benefit but it's a great source of roughage or fibre in our diet which prevents constipation which is very very important. So still on polysaccharides, those large molecules made of those many sugar units bonded together. And we're discussing chitin now because chitin is a polysaccharide and it's unusual because it is a nitrogen containing addition onto each of those glucose molecules that are joined together to make it. So chitin is the main component of exoskeletons in crabs and it's also found in fungal cell walls, which you'll meet again in the chapter on fungi. So finally, to finish up our study of carbohydrates, we have to give an example of a structural and a metabolic role. So the structural role, the example is cellulose, the main component of plant cell walls. And a metabolic role is glucose, broken down in respiration to release energy. So that concludes our study of carbohydrates and our introduction to biomolecules. This is an alternative video. There are other videos and you have your textbook. The best of luck.